All right, in this video, we're gonna be upgrading the CPUs and memory in this 2006 Apple X server. Now, I actually got this server from a Hamfest, actually, uh, and I only paid $22 for this machine. Um, it didn't come with any hard disks, but it did come with 16 gigs of DDR2 ECC memory. Uh, it came with the optical disk drive installed, uh, and it was a fully working machine. So uh, I have it booted up right here, and this is actually hosting uh, my web server currently. We can go into about this Mac here and take a look at the uh, current specs of it. Uh, so as you can see here, this is running OS 10 El Capitan version 10.11.6. Uh, it is of course the original Intel XServe. Uh, it currently has two 2.66 GHz dual core Intel Xeon processors. Uh, those are Xeon 5150 CPUs. Uh, it has 16 gigs of RAM, um, and it has an ATI Radon X1300 video card, uh, which I'm actually going to try to upgrade in this video as well. Um, I don't have a Mac flash card that will fit in this machine, uh, but all I need is a PC graphics card just so uh, I have graphics acceleration in OS X. Uh, as you can see right now, uh, there is no graphics acceleration whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut this machine off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up, and we're going to begin the process of installing the new CPUs, RAM, and video card. Now, this is hosting my web server, and there are probably clients connected to it right now. So uh, I'm just going to shut it down, and they're just going to have to uh, connect and try again at a later time. So, go ahead and shut the machine down here. Wait for it to shut down. Probably will take quite a bit. Shutting down here should take a few more seconds. All right. Well, it seems to be taking quite some time to shut down, so I'm just gonna pause the video here uh, and resume it once uh, the machine is shut down, uh, and we can go ahead and get started on the upgrades. So I'll be right back. All right. So I've now gotten the XR shut down and uh, taken the top cover off, and you can see how big this thing is inside. Now, um, as you can see right here, we've got eight slots of DDR2 ECC memory. Um, I'm going to take all these four gig modules out, or these two gig modules out, and uh, replace them with these eight four gig modules, which will bring this to a total, total of 32 gigs of RAM. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this shroud off, which may just be hot swappable. Uh, no, it does look like there are some screws here. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and install the CPUs. Uh, so let me get all this taken out, and uh, I will be right back. All right, so I have uh, gone ahead and rigged up a little bit of a tripod here for my camera. Now, um, I am uh, the room that this machine is in right now is the same room as my uh, house's furnace. So uh, that might uh, turn on during this video, and if it does, uh, it will be a little bit loud, and I apologize ahead of time for that. Uh, but for now, what we're going to go ahead and do is start by removing this cover right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, Phillips head screwdriver and just unscrew these uh, five screws right here. Alright, and with those removed, we should now be able to lift off this cover. Alright, so right there you can see the two CPU heat sinks. Um, they are quite a bit warm, but they're not too warm. Uh, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is just take my Phillips head screwdriver. It looks like those are uh, just Phillips bits. Yes, they are. And I'm going to go ahead and take these heat sinks off. Um, I've got our new CPUs right here. Here's one of them. Uh, as you can see, this is an Intel Xeon X5365, or X5355, which is a um, quad-core 2.66 gigahertz uh, uh, CPU. Uh, so now I'm just going to go ahead and remove these heat sinks. Let's start with the rear screws here. Okay, I 
guess these screws are captives. Remove this one. Do this one. Remove this heat sink. And it's thermal sensor right there. All right, so here's one CPU heat sink removed. Now, as you can see, these are quite big. Um, as you can see, they're about as big as my hand. So, yeah, they're pretty big CPU heat sinks. Of course, not as big as the ones in the uh, Mac Pro, but uh, they are indeed quite big. Uh, so that is the CPU B heat sink, as you can see right there. Um, so now let me go ahead and take this one off. And whenever you take a heat sink off like this or tighten it, you should uh, do it diagonally as I'm doing here. Uh, there we go. So let's go ahead and remove this for the thermal sensor. Okay, so here's the second CPU heat sink. You can see it's the exact same size as the other one. So I'll go ahead and take that off and set it to the side here. And now we'll just go ahead and remove the original CPUs. So then we can just uh, remove the socket like this and just go ahead and take them out. Uh, so yeah, as you can hear, my furnace just cut on, so sorry about that. But um, here are the original CPUs, or here's the uh, one of the original CPUs. So like I said before, these are uh, 5350, or no, 5150 CPU, Xeon 5150. Um, so that's not what I want to do. So let's go ahead and open this one up, remove this CPU, and uh, yeah, as you can see, both CPUs have been removed. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and clean off the uh, thermal paste on the bottom of these heat sinks here. Um, clean off the new CPUs with some rubbing alcohol and uh, go ahead and install the new CPUs, uh, apply thermal paste, and reinstall the heat sinks. So once I get all the thermal paste cleaned up, I will resume the video. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and cleaned off the CPU heat sink surfaces and the uh, mating surfaces of the new CPUs with some 91% rubbing alcohol. And um, yeah, so now the CPUs are ready to install. Uh, now when you clean the CPUs off, you also want to make sure uh, that you clean the uh, bottom pads off as well, as sometimes those can gather a little bit of dirt and uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, just some dirt or microscopic substances that can actually uh, cause the uh, connection not to mate properly with the pins in the socket. Uh, so you should always just make sure to clean the uh, bottom pads with rubbing alcohol as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of the X5355 CPUs and install it into its socket. Uh, let's just make sure it's the right orientation, as you can see it is. Oh, I believe it is. Yes, it is. Uh, and then once it's in, you can just go ahead and put the uh, thing down and just clamp the socket down. Like so. So let me go ahead and take the second CPU here and install it in the socket as well. All right, so now once both CPUs are installed in their sockets, we can go ahead and apply some thermal paste. Uh, so I've got some Arctic Silver 5 right here. So all you're gonna wanna do is just take your tube and squirt about a pea-sized amount in the middle of each CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, that should be good for this one. And we'll put the same amount on this CPU as well. So I might need a little bit more on this one. All right, and that should do it. Uh, so now I'm just going to go ahead and replace the CPU heat sinks. Uh, so we'll start off with this one on CPU A. I'll go ahead and first plug the thermal sensor wire in. It's a little bit difficult since it's somewhat short. 
All right, well, let me just go ahead and get these in, and uh, I'll go ahead and resume the video once they're in. All right, so as you can see, I have now installed and tightened down uh, both CPU heat sinks. Uh, so now what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and upgrade the RAM. So, uh, of course, all we have to do for that is just simply remove all the modules and then install our new 4 gig modules. So uh, these are eight 2 gig modules, which make a total of 16 gigs. Uh, so we'll go ahead and remove them now. Alright, so all those are removed, so now we just install our new RAM. Alright, so now that all our new memory is installed, we can go ahead and reinstall the plastic cover. Uh, so I've got that right here, and uh, we'll go ahead and put it on. Let's see. So it looks like it has a guide that sort of goes in the middle of them. Alright, so there's that in place. So now all we have to do is re-screw in those five Phillips head screws. All right, so now that I've gotten that back in, we can now get ready to install a new video card. Now, as you can see right here, we've got two PCI Express slots. Um, in this slot, uh, we actually have a fiber channel card installed. This is the... Uh, Apple fiber, fiber channel card that would have come with one of these machines if you had ordered it with one. And um, right here we've got an empty PCIe slot. And uh, right there is actually the uh, other GPU, the Radon X1300. Uh, it is using the uh, what Apple calls the mezzanine slot uh, on the board uh, for it. Um, but of course we can just add a second graphics card in there. Uh, I am going to keep this one in place just because it's flash for Mac, of course, and it uh, can show a boot screen, uh, but the card I'm going to put here does not support a boot screen since it is not uh, a Mac Flash card. And uh, if that does end up causing some issues, I'll just take it out and get a f actual Flash card that will fit in here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and install one that's not flashed, that I know works with OS X, test it, and uh, hopefully that should work. Uh, so I'm going to get this uh, PCIe board and bracket out and we'll go ahead and install the video card then. So I'll be right back. All right, so um, we're now ready to install the new video card. Uh, so this is the video card we're gonna be installing. Uh, this is an AMD Radon HD 6670 graphics card. Uh, as you can see, it is a relatively slim card. Uh, it only uses one, uh, one height of a PCIe slot. So it should fit uh, perfectly fine in this machine. So go ahead and set it there. Um, so this is a little PCIe bracket that goes uh, right here in the machine. So all we have to do on this is just take out the uh, slot blank, which just comes out just like this. And then we'll just take our video card, um, put it in the slot just like this. All right, so as you can see, it fit right in the slot there. We'll just go ahead and put the screw in here real quick. And we should be ready to put it in the machine. So let me go ahead and screw this in real fast. And we'll go ahead and take the video card and put it in the machine. Alright, it seems to fit pretty well in there. 
Uh, so now you just have to screw in these two screws on the outside to hold it in place. Just like so. Alright, and now that that's installed, we've got our RAM installed and our new CPUs are now installed. Uh, we can just go ahead and put the top cover of the XServe back on, uh, boot it up, and see if it works. So I will be right back. Alright, so I just got finished doing a little bit of testing and it turns out that this machine will not boot uh, with both video cards installed and it will not show any video uh, if only uh, this video card is installed. So I did try both configurations and it didn't work either way. So I just went ahead and reinstalled the stock card and removed this one and uh, now the machine should work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it on now. As you can see, uh, it is plugged in. So we'll go ahead and power it on. Hear the fan spin up quite a bit. And in a second here, the video should come on. Alright, so as you can see, it is now on. And in a second here, the system will start booting. Alright, so as you can see, the machine is now booting up. Um, so this will take a little bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here uh, and resume it once the machine finishes booting. I'll be right back. Alright, so you can see that the machine has finished booting. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at about this Mac and make sure everything's detected. So you can see here that it detects the CPUs as 2, 2.66 GHz unknown. Uh, that's actually exactly what the Mac Pro 1, 1 detects these as as well. Um, but I'm not sure if there's a firmware update uh, that you can flash on these to get it to detect those CPUs properly. Now, of course, since this is a server, that's really no big deal. Uh, but if there is a way, uh, I might consider doing it. Uh, as you can see, for the RAM, we've got all 32 gigs detected. Uh, if we head over to the memory tab, uh, you can see it detects all eight 4 gig modules. Uh, for the video, of course, we've got the uh, ATI Radon X 1300. Uh, no accelerated video still, of course, because uh, it did not work with that video card. Uh, but once again, it's a server, so it really doesn't matter all that much. Uh, I would have liked it just to get a higher resolution, though, because uh, this, without acceleration, is limited to 832 by 624, as you can see. Um, so, um, this machine seems to run a lot better now. Um, just going around the user interface, it seems a little bit faster. Uh, you can see the lack of graphics acceleration there. Uh, but let me go ahead and head into our activity monitor here, and we will see if the CPU is uh, detected all eight cores. And as you can see, it is. Uh, and it is running with all eight cores like it's supposed to. So that has been the upgrade of this 2006 Apple XServe 1, 1 to two quad-core 2.66 gigahertz Xeon CPUs and 32 gigs of RAM. So, uh, yeah, that has been the upgrade of this machine. Hope you enjoyed this video.